I would like to present to you how to spice up your speaking classes if you want to. And I suggest that it might be with complex role-playing and simulation games. Uh, and I will show you how and you will try how um, it can be done. First of all, I would just briefly introduce myself. That's me. My name is Andre Kravlitz. Um, I worked uh, at uh, Masaryk University at the Faculty of Education and I studied PhD there. And what I do uh, as, as my you know, PhD thesis and also what I do in my free time, uh, I try to use complex role playing and simulation games in um, TAFL in teaching English and learning English. And in my free time, I'm an amateur actor and also like role-playing activities, uh, LARPs, if you have heard about it. And I've tried to bring my passion into classrooms as well. And I would like to share it with, with you uh, here. And I hope uh, you will like it. That's the thing. Uh, I started an initiative. Uh, it's called Agama, uh, Bearded Lizard in English, but they got different names. Um, and it's based here in Masaryk, at Masaryk University. And that's a platform uh, where we develop together with my programmers, voice actors, people, volunteers mostly. Uh, we develop games and design games uh, that are based on stories. Uh, they can teach you some realia as well, about a bit about history. But most of all, uh, they should be fun to do. There are games after all. And the main purpose of them is to help students practice their speaking skills, so mostly focusing on really negotiating discussion skills. And we decided to create something meaningful for them and also uh, help uh, teachers and students by creating apps uh, that can be used and like, you know, make the whole process a bit uh, less, more painless, more painless. Um, so this is like the, the mind map that pretty much sums it up all. And I suggest that we try straight away. Okay, without much fuss, I promise that after we try two games, there will be like a feedback session. I'll give you a bit of theory. I'll answer your questions. I will show you around the whole games. But let's first try it. I believe that might be the thing. So I want you to imagine that you are board of directors famous international company, Apple, like, something like that. And the company is in crisis. That means stocks are falling. Investors are very nervous, getting very nervous. You know, the previous board of directors got fired. They hired you to solve the issues. So now it's time to read your role cards, these ones. And that's your role you're going to have in the company. If there are two of them, for example, HR and sales director, you can choose. It's up to you. The next step is that you make a group. It's easy. You need to create a jigsaw puzzle. So you need to put it all together. If you've got a complete picture, you've got your team. There will be one person This kind of be like, oh, I'm no, uh, nowhere. I will help the person find their group as well. But Based on the bits of and pieces of your jigsaw puzzle, make the teams and get comfortable around one table because that's going to be very, very important in the next 20, 30 minutes. Almost ready. It should be five and five, and one person feels that the person's kind of extra. You can join the group you like. So it'll be five and six, two groups. Yeah, there you go. This is for you. I'll tell you what to do with it in a minute. And one iPad for you. There you go. Uh, 
the games we developed got uh, support in um, apps, web-based apps. So you will try those apps out. So you put one tablet for the group, that's just enough. And I want you to think quietly for, let's say, 20 seconds uh, about priorities you might have as the director you are or you have chosen. That means that if you are a like, chief financial officer, you probably need to keep tight budget. Uh, it's probably you need to have audit, well done, taxes, all right. Um, maybe you don't believe in marketing much, that's fine. Just try to think about your mindset as the director you are. If you have no idea what IT means, it doesn't matter, just pretend. That's it, two different endings based on your decisions. Of course, it's only a game, okay? Don't feel that you might be an incompetent businessman. It's fun. <laughs> sure, it's just to know, you know? Where to invest, who to listen to. So that was um, the first of the games. I'll just briefly summarize with the experience, but I'll get in, uh, more, into the, uh, more into it in, uh, in the end. Uh, but uh, you've experienced the second half of the game. In the first half, there are some nine issues they can, uh, they already know in advance, students. So they can think about their priorities, you know, uh, maybe some of the points they would like to raise. And when they get to, uh, together in, the, in those groups, they first discuss the first stage, which is a bit longer. And uh, the other stage, number two, is a bit shorter. Again, they uh, take some time. They cannot be prepared because they don't know. Uh, what's in the second stage, and then the process you went through it. There is usually 95% of the time reflection sessions at the end of it. But I will talk about it later, what a teacher can or should do during these uh, sessions when students seem to be like self-served somehow with the app and themselves. Um, I suggest we try one more game, if you don't mind. Uh, again, it will be a very short demo. So you'll need to rush through it, which is not the experience I usually tend to suggest for my students, but just for sake of getting to know the apps, the web on. So, like zero. It's 1665, I believe. Imagine 17th century, England, Northern England. Great plague has just started. Uh, small town in northern England called Greenfield for some reason. Greenfield indeed. 1,000 inhabitants. The plague has arrived. A bundle of cloths from a uh, local tailor. He opened it up, got sick. That's it. Everybody's really scared right now. The council, that's you, has decided to close the gates in order to prevent the plague from spreading any further. And that's number one decision you've made. And of course, the city is closed. You've got some stream of like food going in by like very elaborate scheme, like um, you know, you send the bucket down the city walls, you get some food and you you know give them some money in return. Of course, they are like cleared in vinegar cloths because that helps against plague. You don't believe that? Yeah, it does. Uh, but of course, resources limited, people are restless, trying all kinds of stuff. And your task as a council will be to tackle these issues. Very simple issues usually when it comes to description, but they might have far-reaching consequences for the town and for the region. So I will show you the web page where you get to, you know, it's pretty much the same. Join, you know, again, enter the code, join the game, and then uh, you can go uh, issue by issue. There are always, in this game, like options. You can choose either A or B or A, B or C. Uh, if you can't decide in the group, take a vote. Okay, that's possible. Uh, there is a mayor in each of the groups. There's the person uh, who can decide if it's a tie. As the person like, with the most power granted by the god and the king. Uh, again, 
uh, several issues. The two of them are optional, so if you feel that you are pressed for time, we'll I would try to monitor that. You can skip those. And again, in the end, in the end you will get the video ending based uh, on your decisions during the game. And so let's do it. Uh, it's the other web uh, page you should find there, but it's this one. So agama.pet.mune.cz slash greenfield. And again, you get to the play section and enter the code. The code is the same. It's, if it was F1, it's again FF1 for your group. Read your roles. You can think about the priorities again. Try to you know, get in the role, even though it's very difficult as the time is limited. And then you can start the council with the first point of your meeting. The game will take you throughout several days, maybe months. So you will always say, day 100, issue presented to you and you need to decide. Okay? Uh, I always tell my students that uh, they can think about better solutions to these, of course. And or they ask, is every precaution made? And I tell them, yes, it is. That's the best thing you can do, either A or B. And if you want to send in plague doctor in special clothes and with a lot of vinegar and put a smoke screen in front of the house, done. All the precautions are made. And the important thing is what's written in there. Okay? So don't, you cannot choose anything else, even though I believe you can come up with even better solutions for the thing. <laughs> so, that's it. Uh, thank you very much for playing uh, the games. It was just you know, to give you the taste of what the games are about, what's the feeling. It was like super fast and everything. Uh, it usually takes much more time for the groups to decide um, and also to prepare for it. But as you are fast learners, it got you straight, uh, straight in the deep water and you swam. Great. Thank you for that. Uh, so, but pretty much went through two games. CEO Greenfield, I believe these two games are like easy to get in very fast, at least that what I've seen. And I would like to talk a bit about theory and the cornerstones of the games and also give you some tips uh, on using the games uh, in your teaching if you're interested and also we can uh, arrange all kinds of things like I'll give you the code so you can start the games, you can have some troubleshooting. I've managed to see some typos even after two or three years that's still there. So, you know, the, the games are developed and redeveloped uh, every semester, you know, improved based on the feedback of the students. There are some, there are some changes to be. However, uh, there are some cornerstones for the, for, for the games you've tried. And first one of them is immersion, I believe. That means that uh, we give them really the realia and we try to create a story that is that will captivate the people and get them in the story, involved. That's also the reason why you give them the role cards. Some people take it really seriously, get in, deep into it. Some people have like a flavor. They pretty much play 21st century people with the flavor of medieval or something like that. It's up to them. But we offer that opportunity. And if you care about, uh, for example, in the trial, if you care about the person, uh, you know, it gets more real, the, the, your involvement and that's one of the things we wanted to achieve. The other thing is that there is scaffolding, uh, or kind of scaffolding, and that's the web page. Before they actually play the game, you haven't had the opportunity. They need to study it. There is vocabulary summary I will show you. Uh, they can see, uh, watch the videos, get some vocabulary, prepare for it, you know, get some uh, phrases for discussion. Forgot something. No problem. See you around. So, where was uh, Okay, yeah, scaffolding. So, you mm, give them uh, all you can. And, of course, some of them just go through it quickly. It's fine. Uh, some of them really prepare well, and it's up to them. It's individualization, I believe. Uh, in some of the games, you really need a scaffolding. For example, for the trial, for the murder case, if you don't read it, if you don't create some kind of notes, um, there's not much to talk about. Uh, it can be played online and offline. Uh, I prefer it offline when you get one smart device and a group of people together in a room. Uh, on the other hand, it's possible to have it online. That means you get you know, some kind of students that are you know, distance students or something like that, combined students. Uh, we've got a, we decide on a time. 
uh, set up a video conference uh, such as Google Hangouts and one of the uh, people in the group as opens the app, shares the screen, has the screen and others can see and you pretty much go uh, online as possible that in online A there is a module for like online version of these games and it works as well. Uh, what I believe is very important uh, in the game is that you've got conflicting options or opinions on the issues. So kind of competitive. You know, you want your uh, opinion to be the right, you want the resources for yourself a bit. On the other hand, you try to beat the game. So you kind of cooperate, but you need to exchange uh, ideas and negotiate. That's probably what I wanted to achieve in the games. And there is you are, or the player is not the enemy, you can beat, but you can beat the game. You can, you know, win it somehow, or at least survive, or something like that. So, uh, I believe it's very important for the game that they've got A and B on the line, which I will talk uh, about it a bit later. And when it comes to feedback, there are uh, several things you can do, and reflection, we might uh, discuss it a bit more in, in detail. Just quick uh, tips, uh, I've got it uh, throughout the years, uh, I've uh, played these games with my students. Uh, first of them, I usually don't interrupt them much. I just, you know, sit, uh, I choose a group or two of them and take notes. Take notes what they say, what they use, what the group dynamics, if they don't speak too long, if they uh, give enough opportunity to others. And then I try to give them the feedback. I usually try to focus on one or two groups within the lesson and the next lesson I usually pick uh, other group, another group. Uh, so you can do that. You can, of course, ever uh, you can focus on individual mistakes on the based on what you want to do with it. Maybe a bit of pronunciation practice. So listen to pronunciation. You check advanced grammar points. You can do that. Uh, not only mistakes, but you can talk about gaps. You know, things that can be used, great opportunity, but were not used. Maybe that's the gap they cut. So you can next time you can teach or pre-teach some vocab or phrases that might be useful for your students because they might be used very naturally, but they were not. So it's another thing. Uh, for some of the games, I don't do only language reflection, like feedback, you know, how you performed, but also try to give them uh, some tasks uh, to reflect about the topic of the game. Imagine in the Plague Stricken Town, how would you decide what was the, the, the most difficult issue so we can reflect about the topic, or uh, they can summarize it in one word, for example, and it depends how deep they got uh, in the game. But you don't have to only focus on language. Sometimes for some people it's very important to just talk about the topic, you know, drag it off pretty much, get from the row, and then they are ready for, for some language feedback. Or you can write it down the feedback and send it to them later when they are ready for some language. It's uh, up to you. If you've got very weak students, uh, it's possible to join in one of the groups, for example, and to be a chair of the meeting conduct it and distribute the power. What do you think about it? Okay, that's very interesting. And does anyone else agree, disagree? So you can kind of manage it from within. You get very uh, weak students, but they usually manage on their own. I give them the moderator, like rights and everything, and they can manage. I just show them how to use the app, that's it. And then I decide what I want to do, what I want to focus on. And that's very important when the session is over, I think the game give them some feedback, but you focus the feedback and the reflection as you like it. And we can uh, then talk about it about some more points. A bit of theory, uh, as your academics, I try to sneak in some theory I believe might be true for the games. Um, you can confront me if you don't agree, it's fine. Uh, there are different learning cycles when it comes to experiential learning. This is one that is not that well known, but I believe might be very true. It's a model based on which uh, the games are built, I would say, or, or the activities run around. And I pretty much, uh, I, will, I will demonstrate uh, what it means, because these, these are fancy international words, uh, but what it means. So, first of all, before you actually came here, you read the invitation and you got interested. That's the exposure, pretty much. Because it's like, I would like to know more, I would like to try that. Hopefully it's not you know, uh, wasted time, time well spent. Then you try the games for yourselves. Two of them, they demos, that's fine, but you participated. You tried it hands on. Then there's internalization, that's fancy word for reflection. And that means uh, 
that you think about it for yourself. Okay, does it make sense in my last sense? Would I would like to use this? Okay, I've got business students, maybe the CEO game might be fine for them. What's the advantage? How can I squeeze it in 45 minute lessons? That might be some of the ideas you might have. You think about it. Also, I'm giving you a bit of food for thought. That means uh, the theory I'm talking right now. And dissemination, that's hopefully you trying to use the games in your own teaching or uh, taking some of the elements for your own games or activities. That's you, you, you use it uh, again or in, and again practically somehow. When it comes to students, so this, this lesson, this workshop is designed around the cycle of steps as well. When it comes to students, they go through the web pages, prepare for the game, exposure. Then they participate, 60 minutes of speaking, intensive discussion. Then you give their feedback, they think, they think about the topic, think about things they can improve, and the next time they try again. They get some new you know, negotiation skills, they don't want all the time for themselves, they mince words more. That might be the effect. They learn some useful phrases when you want to you know, kind of express that you don't agree but you don't want to be rude. And again, they play, for example, another game or use it in their work and uh, they practice and grow. That's the reason why I don't like it as a cycle but more like a staircase because if you do it properly, you grow with your English, with your soft skills because it's not only about English. Uh, this is probably the message, the most important message for me, uh, is that when I set activities for my students, I want them to be, uh, the goal is beyond the language, put it, put it uh, like that. That means that I don't tell them like, uh, now you two talk about the weather you see outside, or say, or talking about weather or exchanging ideas, but I want to give them some kind of issue they need to solve, and the language is the tool, which is true for most of the students, apart from those who like with linguistics and grammar, or us teachers, we want to sometimes you know, just to know the language. Not many people around though. So I give them a task, and that's the, these games are the task, task-based learning, and they need to solve it, they need to negotiate, they need to argue, they need to vote, uh, and that's the thing. They want to be the game, and the language is the tool. And I believe successful activities, it doesn't matter if you do like lower secondary schools or if you do uh, university students. Uh, the thing is, if the goal beyond makes sense, they will operate and hopefully you, you know, put it to them uh, like very nicely, they might use the language, the target language, of course. University students, they are, I hope, a bit better than you know, my uh, students at lower secondary schools. So I was to explain a lot. Uh, this is a concept uh, by Vygotsky, you might be familiar with it, uh, I'm a no, no expert on Vygotsky, but I would like to just share some ideas I have about what he says or said or what was translated and what I believe you can find in the games. If you give your students a very easy task, it's talking about the weather, they would get bored and it won't push them any further into their English. If it's too difficult, if I tell my sixth graders to discuss the plague case in detail, nothing would happen because it's too difficult, they can't manage. However, there is something that is like beyond the boundaries of what they can. It might be challenging for them, speaking uh, within the group of peers, that might be the thing. And if we uh, give them enough uh, like help, they can grow. And I believe these games can push some of the limits your students might have a bit further. There are different suggestions on what Vygotsky thought. Americans uh, think, or that's one of the, the you know, understanding, that you can use scaffolding as well. Like, the, not people, but you can use tools, you know, for example, the web pages. That should help them grow. They, they can find the phrases, the vocabulary, so it helps them to finish the games. I believe that Vygotsky is more about people because it's social constructivism, uh, I believe. And that means that other people can help you grow. That might be you as, as a teacher, uh, can give them some feedback, help them grow with uh, this feedback. But ultimately, I believe it's the other students. That's the reason why they work in groups. They can and they usually do learn a lot of new phrases from their peers, they exchange. And if you, sometimes it happens that they share a mistake together. 
that's the reason why you are there to you know help them kind of not fossilize the mistake but they can learn a lot from each other uh, just by you know getting in the interaction and it's been proven that it doesn't matter much if the speaker you speak with is really high level and gives you perfect model of speech or it's kind of like your level but you try to get to uh, try to understand each other there's not much difference so no worries about that your students are not good enough to listen to each other they are that's fine they can learn from each other and that's probably uh, what I believe Vygotsky uh, or not Vygotsky but that's the thing I believe uh, is in the games or can be used for, for our advantage and also is related to Vygotsky I would put it like that uh, five is the number or the size of the group that I believe and also some uh, scores believe might be the, the best number for the group size. If it's fewer people, it's fine, but there is not a variety of options, uh, opinions, sorry, of opinions. And that might be like, they might be really done with it very quickly. I agree, me too, yeah. Let's do it. If it's more, of course, you will have a variety, but there is not enough space uh, for them to speak. So I believe five is very good. It's also odd number, so you, you never have a tie. You need to decide. So I believe that's the reason why I wanted to make a group of five and six. That's a very good number, uh, even for students. Enough practice, enough uh, opinions, and your voice is still heard. It, 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 uh, like means something in the game but you can have different or uh, different ideas about that you know your groups sometimes small groups work well even bigger groups if you have uh, uh, give them enough time might work fine as well so I would like to talk a bit about uh, the initiative about the scenarios you can try in uh, your own teaching and I will try to give you a quick walk through uh, through the web page uh, you might see on the board, it's agama.pat.muni.cz. That's the home of the initiative. And from this very place, you can get to every single game. I'll show you how. We also have Facebook page, which is really great. I mean, Facebook's dying, uh, according to teenagers nowadays. They are, everybody's on the Instagram nowadays, so I'm sorry I'm still on Facebook. Uh, but you can like us, that's, that's great, right? I just put it there. I'm not very good with social media. I like to create the games rather than, you know, take care of the agenda there. But it's there as well, and pretty much I read the stuff that uh, people send me. So five scenarios. The company one, the CEO you've already played. Uh, the jury duty, some of you might have studied it. I believe this one is the most difficult when it comes to preparation. And it really makes the difference if you prepare well, take notes, and think about the case or you just rush in the class and what, what's happening. In that case, you, you can't reinvestigate the case if you have no idea what happened. So this one really puts some, uh, like, your students need to do something for it in order to, to make it working for them. I've seen some students that haven't seen much of it and they just like sat there and was like, yeah. And that was it. So um, that's, that's very demanding, this one. For students, play trick and talent, mildly demanding, who want to get in the mood for the period, maybe get to know what people thought about play at the time, which is very interesting. And there are two more in making. One is like ready, I just need my programmer to finally code it properly. Uh, that's about sailors in the Arctic, it's called the North Northwest Passage. And it's 1845 and Her Majesty the Queen sends sailors on the two ships, Erebus and Terror. You might have heard about that true story again. And they are about to look for Northwest Passage from the Atlantic to the Pacific around Canada, the frozen waters. And I might tell you, the, the story in real life didn't end very well. <laughs> they found the ships like two and five years ago, approximately, uh, in the 21st century. They're still not much sure about what happened but your students can kind of live their whole story and they can make the better ending, though it's not very probable. <laughs> but some of them want to play it again in order to succeed, which would be nice. And the other one is called The Mop, and it's about based on a 
again some true events about Jewish mafia in New York. So you can manage your own family somehow and try to negotiate with Irishmen, you know, with Italians and try to survive mostly and make some money. This one will be ready hopefully for Christmas. Uh, Sailors in the Arctic, uh, it's, it's done, but I just need it to be coded, so hopefully a month or two months and it's ready. By the end of the year, because it's the grant policy as well, uh, these five games should be ready and everybody should be able to use them without much difficulty. I'll just take you through the web pages quickly and that will be it. Uh, so this is the landing page. Uh, you can have it in English as well if you feel so, uh, or in Czech, so keep it in English. I'm sorry the mind map is in Czech only, but that's pretty much what it stands for. The Agama, it's a abbreviation, or it's not abbreviation, it's the, the other thing. Acronym, thank you very much. And it stands for Academic Absolute Ambitious Gamification of English, which is in Czech English, you know. Uh, there are some materials for teachers, so for, for example, reflection sessions, there are some suggestions. And if you have no opportunity to use uh, smart devices, uh, you can uh, download the things uh, yourself and you can, for example, play the Grimfield. You just take their uh, you know, decisions and based on it you tell them what is the ending possible. It can be like narrated in this uh, manner. Uh, but I usually like my apps to do the heavy lifting for me, the mathematics and stuff like that, and I can focus on their language on, and on their like, teamwork, for example. However, it's possible so you can kind of check out what's behind it, what's behind the games to get to know them if you're interested uh, for your own. Uh, of course, there are some things that explain what needs to be done. That's pretty much what I'm doing right now. And there are the five games here. So let's start with this one. That's the murder case, People versus Johnson. All the things are mildly based on things that happened, but they're just inspired and that kind of combined realities and it never ends as it ended in real life. 1908, a wealthy businessman got killed. There is only one suspect. And you need to uh, decide whether the person is guilty or not guilty. If you have seen the movie 12 Angry Men, it's a huge inspiration for the, for the game. So it's not, not very clear what happened. Uh, during the game, this is probably the shortest when it comes to discussion because it's just not guilty, guilty. But during the game, they get some extra pieces of evidence that can kind of change their uh, decision in the end. Uh, when I've got very good group or students that are very confident, I suggest that they might play devil's advocates if they're fine with that. Because if the group agrees, that's one of the tricks I use, it gets boring even for them. And if anyone is successful in English, confident enough, to play the devil's advocate because you get all the hatred from the people. They don't agree suddenly, right? You need to tell them it's, it's a game, it's not the people. Sometimes very difficult, they get to, you know, uh, very personal about it. But if they can manage, it might spice up the game uh, quite nicely because the person tries to reinvestigate and asks all kinds of ifs, which is great. In the game, there are always instructions for your students what they need to do. There are newspapers from the time, uh, as you know, the budget is low, I usually play all the things myself or I ask my friends. So that's a light motif of the game, it's my face sometimes in it or my voice. But I try to, you know, ask people, native speakers, to do a bit of acting for me sometimes. So for example, if you know Elsa from the Department of English Language, she's a Queen Victoria you know, in, the, in the Northwest Passage, so try to kind of like distribute the fame as well. Uh, You've got uh, the photos from the scene, uh, some notes, coroner's reports, uh, three testimonies of three people, including the defendant, and I always include some kind of overview of vocabulary in form of a mind map. Uh, it's not uh, that is not that is not everything; it's not exhaustive, but you pretty much find some of the things that might be useful for your students. And again, the play section. Uh, the CEO, you have played. I will just pinpoint some of the things that I like. You can get in the story a bit behind the business. It all started in 2014, which is far, far away nowadays. What I like is this. Uh, that pretty much this is all the teams that have played the game so far, and uh, it changes over time. There's one bug, that this one has been bug. They kind of kind of hacked it somehow. Uh, uh, but the rest of the teams, they're pretty like 
but that's their result. Uh, and as you can see, a lot of teams uh, have played the game so far. There is leaderboard, so as you can see, there's a list of all the teams and uh, their high score. Yeah, yeah, you there? There you go. That's great. So that's the element of beating the game. You know, you gotta fight a bit just to, you know, spice it up. Can you be better? Yeah. Especially boys like it, I believe. Uh, again, for the game, there are some of the issues are, you know, well known, so you can prepare your opinions about that. Again, vocabulary when it comes to stock markets, managing the company, you can find it there and the play section. When it comes to Greenfield, instructions and the intro, that's the Taylor's Fate, that's the, the bundle of plot that arrived in the town. You can uh, learn a bit about the era, Charles II, King that loved parting, I believe. Uh, you can learn a bit about town and also this, these are the roles uh, you pick. And you can learn a bit about Plague, it's another member of the staff, uh, if you know Mr. Suhi. So he talks about the Plague, what people thought at the time. Again, it's usually based on real materials. This is, these are is taken from orders of the king, uh, how the Plague needs to be tackled. Okay, so he talks about it. Again, some vocab when it comes to society and the town council and play section as well. This little thing called average population of town and it changes after each game you play. So if you save enough people, it slowly rises. It never gets too high though. Um, and again, it's based on true story. Uh, it's called the city or the town is called Ayam. It's in Northern England. It's more like a myth, but something like that ha happened. They closed the gates in order not to spread the plague. They sacrificed themselves the town. And then I like it, the pathos of the whole story, that's the reason why I created Greenfield, which is it's my shadow image of the AM at the time. Two more games that I promise will be ready for you, and if you're interested, just send me an email, I'll send you the codes. That's it. That's that easy. So, I believe there's one more thing I need to do. I'm very sorry, but I have to. Serious thing indeed. I need to thank you for your attention.